welcome back. All right. So I hope you're pretty excited um, now that we're doing AngularJS and after watching the last video, assuming you've watched the last video, the first video in this sec chapter six on AngularJS, that you're pretty intrigued and your interest is piqued um, and you're excited to be learning more Angular, just seeing from that simple example how easily it is to tie your control up with um, JavaScript and have it do really cool things. So in this video, we're going to be talking about directors. We're going to say what they are briefly without getting too deep into them. And we're going to play with some of the directors. We're not going to get into to write directors and all that. We're going to limit our scope on directors in this video to just use in just a few of them. Actually, quite literally just two of them. And so that's it. Let's keep it simple. And this video is going to be long enough. So let's get started right now. Okay. So what is a director? Well, basically, a director is used to generate and manipulate code, your HTML, in my opinion. And we'll see how that is. Um, and the other thing, so this is strictly HTML thing. The other thing to know about directors is um, they come in four categories. So directors could be um, attributes, um, as we saw in the last video, we're going to be seeing in this video. They could be elements, which we haven't seen yet. They can be um, used to modify your, your style sheet, your CSS class. And finally, they can be used in comments. I have to tell you, I put those in the order that I miss, mostly use them. I mostly use them as attributes and at elements. And then very rarely do I use them to modify class, but you're going to see some of that. And I've never, ever used directives um, in comments. And I've been doing Angular for over two years. Okay, so very rare you're ever going to want that one okay so now let's talk about um take a look at what when it, these four categories and what it look like when you're using a directive so let's say you're a uh, p element and you wanted to use the ng if directive on it this is how you'd use it it's an attribute so here you're using it as an attribute and so it becomes like any other attribute we know for the p element like i or class or something so there it is. There's the ng if um, directive. You'd be used as an attribute. Um, there are other directives too. And another example of the ng repeat directive being used on the dir tag, okay, or element. Now, a directive can, can also be elements. So you can have a directive where you use it just like an element. And so, for for example, let's say I had a directive called name, and it's you know a dash name for example. I can just use it, and it's an element directive. I can use it that way. Or my DIR, if I want to make my own directive, that'd be if, however I call it, my DIR. Um, in terms of using it as a class and a comment, they're the example. They're pretty straightforward. Like I say, you're going to see, never see the one at the bottom pretty much. And the first three, you're going to see. But the first two, we're going to really deal with. So let's take a look at that. One of the first directives I want to talk about is the ng model directive. But before I show the ng model directive, what is model anyway? So th there's this software architecture called MVC, and it stands for Model View Controller. And basically, it's just a certain specific way in which you can organize your application. So if you talk to somebody and say, oh, I have an MVC architecture for my software, they kind of already know that oh, you have some part of your application that you recognize as the model, another part that you have recognizes the view and another part is controller. Doesn't mean there's only one controller or one view or one model. It's just that the different parts could be kind of thrown into those big buckets. And you'll see variation in the team, but the general idea is this. And the model is that represents an abstraction of the data that your application uses. The view is how that data is presented. And the controller is sort of the negotiator between the two and you know, help you when the user makes some changes on the view, it updates the model or it might help control things or validate things. We'll see how the controller comes in. Now, here's an example of an application that um, really used this MVC, Excel. If you know of any spreadsheet application, you probably know of Excel. Think of when you type some data into the spreadsheet, that's a view and a certain representation of your data. That's how you enter it. And then it's being stored in a, inside Excel somewhere and on, in a disk and on file, and you don't know how. But that's your data, your model. And yet, it can be presented to you as a spreadsheet or in any number of graphs. So using the same data, same model, 
you can have multiple views representing that same data in different ways. And the controller is what you don't see, actually, but it's also equally important. And that's when you click your button here and you draw here and all this other stuff. The controller is the one who gets signal and says, oh, they've updated the view or something. Let's take that information and push it to the model or vice versa, or they want to erase something or remove something from the model, those sort of things, okay? So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. If you don't get it, don't worry. You're going to be seeing MVC often, so don't worry about it. We're going to get us going out and get our hands dirty. And we're going to look at two examples, one called an NG model directive and NG if. And then I'm going to show you a teaser of what's coming up in the next video. So these are the two examples we're going to be looking at, but I'm not going to step and look at them here because we're going to go straight to the code and start playing with it and run it. All right, so let's look at the example here. And so the first um, directive we're going to look at uh, or play with is the model direct, ng model directive. So, and ng is just basically think of it like a namespace. And so all the uh, um, Angular JS directives are going to have ng in front of it and then the name of the directive. So if you make your own directive, which I'll show you later how to make your own directives, you can choose a name, so you might call it, you know, my or a or k or whatever. So for example, me, I might use something like v, a or something like the dash, whatever. That depends, okay? It's just uh, the convention that they use. Anyway, um, this example page, we have two directives only. ng model, the one we really, I really want to show you, and this ng app. For now, I'm not going to explain ng app, except to say though it's required for now. On every um, Angular application we're going to write, we're going to use ng app directive. And that's basically going to be used to bootstrap um, the Angular JS. Um, it basically, when you load the Angular JS here, this code is going to be executed and it's going to look for in your DOM, you know, your HTML, to see if the representation of the HTML, which is called a DOM, is going to look for this ng app. And if it finds it, it knows how to, you know, what it should do, bootstrap prop appropriately. So that's all I'm going to say about it. I just assume that you always need it, just like uh, maybe if I told you for all HTML, file, you, HTML pages, you always need this above here. So just assume that's the case. So ng model introduces or um, creates a variable if you don't have it um, in your environment, in your scope, and we're going to talk more about that later. And in this case, when I say ng model, this variable name name, and you can use any variable name you want. And so um, it's going to bind it to this input text box. And it knows how to link it up to a text box. It knows how to link it up to a checkbox and a number um, input and all this other stuff. So it is clever enough to know how to treat each type of input appropriately. And now I've introduced this variable name. Um, I can use it other places, okay, which you see here. And similarly here, I have another variable, and um, I'm using it here. And likewise, you could see all over I have different variables, and I'm using them differently. All right, so let's just hopefully, um, this is not too big a leap for you to see that oh, the ng model on, on the input control tells it which variable to use, and if the variable doesn't exist, it creates it, and you know, you can use it. So now that variable is available for you to use other places in your HTML. So let's just kind of play with this. And I'm gonna use the live preview to load up this page and just play it a little bit. So here's the first example. I'm gonna type in some text. And of course, as you can see, it's being updated um, in real time here, which is sort of what you saw in the previous section. Now we just kind of look at it a little bit more closely. Here I have um, this variable called is valid, and I didn't set a value for is valid. Um, I just used it here in the input and checkbox, and so you can see once I check it, it is true, and then once I uncheck it, it's false. And let me refresh the page to show you how it doesn't have a value, and so that is almost like a false, but not quite false. And now I check it, it's true. Uncheck it, it's false. And so again. Um, Angular is smart enough to know that oh, the, this variable should be treated more like you know a Boolean data type. 
Here I have this variable count that's tied to uh, input of type number. I set the minimum and the maximum, and let's see what happens there. And so here, this input, since it's a number, it gives me this spinner. And so notice the minimum is 10, so it doesn't allow me to go below that. And the maximum is 20, it doesn't allow me to go below above that. Now I could type in um, any number I want. So you see I type 2 there, but notice how it didn't get updated in my variable. So Angular is looking at this control and say, oh, you've typed 2, that's not valid. So I'm not going to update the correspond the variable as bounded to it. So it's doing validation for you. And you can, later on, we're going to see how you can get access to these validation so that you can show the user an error message or something or draw to their attention that oh, either the value is not correct or whatever. Okay? And if I put 22 or whatever, same thing. Of course, if I put 20, now Angular says, oh, that's a valid value. Right? If I type 15, valid value, not valid value. Okay. Here, um, I've used the range input type, and I said the minimum is 10, max is 20. And now I'm going to be able to slide this up and down again, just as expected. Oh, um, because I didn't actually set the val what value um, this variable should start with, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't have a value. Okay, again, just like all the other ones, it's empty. And so the input itself, the input range controller always starts in the middle of whatever range you set, right? All right. So I hope that's kind of clear and makes it kind of easy how to use um, this NG model. And we're going to be using that so often because that's all we're going to be able to bind to input controls so the user could type stuff into us, you know, into our application. Let's look now at ng if, which again we have seen also in the previous example, but now we're kind of just focused on them individually. And so ng if, um, I'm still using ng model here to get some input. The difference now is I've put the ng if as an attribute. So, so far, as you can see in the examples I'm showing, that we're using these um, directives all as attributes. We haven't used any attributes, any directive yet that's an element or we haven't used any as a, on a comment, or we haven't used any on a um, class. And like I said before, in my experience with Angular, most of the time I've used them as elements and attributes. Those are the only two I've mostly used. I never to use, um, very rarely I've used it as class, but let's continue. And so now I'm using this as an attribute on the p tag. And so it says, test this value, this variable, Take the variable, sorry, and if the value of this variable is somehow evaluated to be truth, whether that's a Boolean true or it contains an actual non null value or, or nothing that's empty, then I want to show this control. And that's why when we start up, this doesn't have a value, it's kind of evaluated as false and it hides this entire P control. And so that's why when I start typing, you can see since I type one character, it shows up, right? So Angular is doing that real up, um, updating it every time I change. It. Um, it's looking at the events on this and updating the inputs, um, the variable. Same thing here, show more. You can imagine that I have a checkbox and I have uh, some more content I'd like the, to show the user and I want them to have some control over if this should, this should be di displayed, some details or something. So I put a checkbox here, I tie it to a model and now when that's checked, here, we know it's going to be like a Boolean, but of course, when it starts off, it's going to be null so or empty, so undefined variable, so this variable doesn't have a value, so it's going to evaluate as a false, so it's not going to be shown. But once I start checking it and unchecking it, it's going to have the right behavior again, okay? So we know from our previous example that when this is off, no, it's false, and of course, it's hidden because this evaluates as false, and it doesn't get shown. By the way, Angular has some other um, a number of um, directives, which I hope you went to the page on the previous slide and look at. Um, but just glance at them if you like. Um, there's one called ng show and ng hide, and they work pretty much the same way as ng if. So you can see ng show here, and it would still behave the exact same way. If the expression evaluates to the true, then it may show it. If you use ng hide, if the expression evaluates to the true, it means hide it. All right. Um, final example here is I'm going to use the input range, same thing, and now I'm going to show some a different message if the value is greater than 10. 
greater than or equal to 10. What I want to show is the actual expression instead of just evaluating the variable alone, I want to show you can actually put an expression here. And so here, if I slide this over, as soon as you reach 10 or more, it shows the message. If it's below, it doesn't. Okay, pretty straightforward, very simple. Now, I hope so far you've gotten all of that and we'll have opportunities to see more of it. And so don't worry if it doesn't quite make sense just yet, but and let me know if you, you want further explanation on something. Now, there's a teaser, I'm, and I'm not gonna explain the code for this at all. I'm just gonna skip to this. And I'm gonna say, um, coming up in the next um, session, section, we're gonna be working on something that allows you to do something like this. And I'll explain it then in the next video. And what you're seeing here is I'm using JavaScript code to change a, val a variable, a model variable, and notice Angular is updating the UI. So as I said in the previous video, that when you use um, Angular, it's doing two-way binding on these variables, on your model variables. And so if you bind it to an input control, you could type into that input control, Angular is gonna update the variable plus update any place where the variable is being used, like it's being read, for example, for display. But that's just one way. The other way is what if you change the variable in code? Like let's imagine that you have some JavaScript code that's running in the background, pulling a website or your backend server and fetching data from it. So we could pretend that though um, I have some JavaScript that's actually going back and fetching the time from some server somewhere. And now it's presenting it on the screen. So that the JavaScript code is updating variables or model var models in the background and I'm getting, without doing anything, I don't have to do anything. Um, you can download the code for this when, if you like and run it and you'll see that you don't have to interact with it in any way and it is updating. Okay, so that's all I wanna say for now and then tune in for the next video where I'm gonna explain how this works. Uh, we're gonna be talking about controllers in the next video. Um, here we talk about model. And as I explained that the model view thing is from this architecture of model view controller, MVC. All right, so let's wrap up. Okay, so thanks for watching the video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you've learned something. And please do let me know if there's something I missed or if you'd like to see something else or you're having problems. Otherwise, I'll keep going and assume that everything is okay. And so again, if you haven't subscribed, please do tell others to subscribe. Uh, I would like the channel to grow. Um, I think that uh, there, there's some value here and I hope you feel the same way. All right, take care and see you in the next video. Bye.